<laughs> Welcome back to the Project Gen X podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Alan Smith, along with... I'm the other guy, Big Dave. And you heard right there as we came in another voice that you've never heard before. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm notorious for just turning it on and before you, anybody knows. Anybody who's listened to the show uh, should know this. If you've listened to the show, then you've heard which, which this. Which means somebody hasn't listened to the show. Yeah, no, I know. I heard one episode. I Look, I learned a long <laughs> time ago when I first started podcasting, like 15 years ago, it's kind of like playing in a band. You don't ever, ever count on your friends and family to show up for gigs because they're not going to. They're, they'll say they will, but they don't. It's the same thing with podcasts. They'll say, yeah, I'll listen, and then they never do. So, so, Or they'll listen to one or two episodes, and then, yeah, whatever. So anyway, uh, that other voice that you heard, you have heard about this guy on our show multiple times. Yeah, because we've... we've Throw him under the bus oh, multiple so, times. so, so much well, shit. Now, go <laughs> now it's time to go listen. Yeah, now you're going to go back and listen to all of them. Oh, there's, there's one episode. One in particular. One episode in particular. You're all over it. So it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> now he's like, oh, God, what happened? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Was Tell it, everybody who you are. <laughs> my name's Brody, and I'm, I'm now regretting this a little bit. <laughs> Do you thought? Do you think this was completely altruistic that we brought you on here? I don't know what I thought. And now, excuse me while I Google that word altruistic. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, we we've talked about Brody quite a bit on here. I don't know. I guess I, we've talked a couple of times about you coming on for various reasons, and it just never panned out. And so now uh, we're we've, like, we, yeah, we've also. Um, Throwing you under the bus for some of your music choices. Oh, yeah. oh well, show. you're gonna get some more today. I'm sure. <laughs> we have a whole we have a whole episode about your musical choices <laughs> that you have no clue Son about. Of a... <laughs> all right, all right. Let's see, see now you're gonna have to. Go. We're not gonna tell you what episode. You're gonna have to go on and like download all 180 or yeah, 190 some odd episodes that we have out there to figure out which one. Welcome it is, to the so. show. <laughs> uh, oh well. <laughs> I'll look at the title. I'll probably be able to figure it out. Maybe. From that. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm going to let you explain this since this was your topic. Oh, well, thank you for yeah, that. No problem. So, you know, when you asked, you know, if I want to be on here, I thought it was great. And I appreciate you guys uh, inviting me here. So I was thinking it's summertime, mm -hmm. it's hot. But there are certain songs out there, and it's not the summer playlist, I think, that right. you've done before. We kind of did one before, yeah. but we did one just about summertime. Right. And then we kept, we threw our summer playlists on there. So, But, I mean, most people travel during the summer or they get jobs during the summertime, especially when we were kids. Mm -hmm. And so, the, so I was thinking, what is the songs, the five, six, whatever, right. songs that when you hear them, you are automatically transported back to that one moment, you know, and mm -hmm. there's, and so I was like, you know, what do you think about that idea? And so, you know, it's just an idea of picking a few songs that when you hear them, you're like, oh, yeah. And then it, the sad thing is, is I went over it with my wife today and I was just like, uh, you know, I, I was <laughs> naming like, all these songs and she's just like, yeah, no, no idea, no clue no. what it was. <laughs> oh, because mainly, she knew, she knew two of them. Okay. Because mainly a lot of them are tied to personal memories or personal history or let's put it this way. The, the, the memory I have for the first one, she does not need to. <laughs> so you don't want her to, to listen to this. She episode. won't listen. <laughs> she knows I'm on here. She's like, no, I hear his yeah, voice I'm, all I'm, the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. so it runs in the family. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what we need to do is we need to bring your daughter on here. No, <laughs> no, I don't need you telling the, <laughs> telling stories, telling no. telling stories. Oh well, yeah. well, since <laughs> since you're it's your idea and you're not one to tell a story on the first song, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? So, listen, I mean, growing up in Middle Tennessee, you know, most of us at one point in our life went to Opryland. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah. Um, and, but we all did. When he talked about, so, <laughs> I didn't live in the state. You know, I'm originally from Kentucky, and every summer we would come back to Kentucky, and it wasn't a family vacation unless we drove down here and went to Opryland for you know a day. Yeah. So for uh, even though I lived on the state line up in the town called Portland, um, I would drive down yeah. to uh, to here to work. I mean, I loved working there. there I worked there for three summers. And uh, the first year I sold hot dogs. Like, yay for me. You may have worked with my sister, actually. Uh, I may have done more than that with your sister. (laughs) Um, No, I doubt that. I doubt that. She was over at um, the the roll-around cart that did the little sand creatures where you'd pour the different levels of sand in I never never messed with any of the sand creature people. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm going to leave that (laughs) open-ended. Sorry. I've never met your sister. Apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Um, but then the second year, I used to I sold soft frozen lemonade right outside the uh, uh, what was that one that you could go stand on and it would split splash oh, the bar um, on you. Um, old Mill Scream. Old Mill Scream. Yeah. yeah. And so, and but the third year I was there. I guess people's age, weight, and birth date. I bet that was fun. Oh my gosh! I'm sure you didn't insult anybody. Uh, <laughs> I got French kissed by a 400 pound woman. That was nice. <laughs> That's a different story. That's not what this song reminds me of. By the way, it reminds me of all the times we used to hang out back, yeah. <laughs> back in our 20s. <laughs> yeah. Once again, we don't need to tell all these stories right now. <laughs> but anyway, I, so there was this young lady there that I was uh, was fancy on. Uh, mm. Her name was Michelle. Kind of fancy on. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. And her name was Michelle. Mm-hmm. And the song "Fly." Hi, Michelle had just hit radios from Enough's Enough. Dude. Did I take one of yours? <laughs> He's already into my list. <laughs> really? You have Fly High Michelle? No, I take oh. it back. It's a different song from the same album. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a different song from the same album. So there's just something about that song that every time I hear it, I, it's not that I think back to that girl or the the woman that Frenched me. Um, I, I'm sure I just, you're trying to forget that. <laughs> you'll never forget that. I, I never drank those memories away. I oh, tried. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the the... Just the thought of going back to Opryland. I mean, let's be honest. It's a it's a mall now. Oh, the it's, biggest mistake man. in in Middle Tennessee history. Yep. Yeah. But, but that that song. Every time I hear it, it takes me back there. That so. makes that's yeah. Nice. I get that. I get that. What you got? Um, I'm going to go back. I, I've talked about this before, and I, I've even talked about the fact that this is like the 40th anniversary of this vacation. Uh, when I was nine, the first time I went to Florida, my family was family joint family vacation with my, uh, uh, aunt Mary and uncle Jess and my cousin David, who's like, I think I can't remember if he's six or seven years older than me, but he was a teenager. I was nine, you know, we went to Panama city and, uh, summer of 83 and beat it was I mean, it was, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Michael Jackson, but that song yeah. was like the current single and it was everywhere. Um, and that was kind of the, the beginning of my previous to that. It's not that I didn't listen to, you know, popular music or whatever, but you know, your parents kind of dictate what you listen to when you're in the A lot car. of Statler brothers. A lot. Yeah. Really and truly a lot of Statler brothers and a lot. I still love, you know, a lot of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, a lot of country music, a lot of oldies, you know, and a lot of, uh, of gospel music, you know. And so this was kind of my step over into the fun stuff. <laughs> 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 yep. And it really was. I've often said that that, that thriller album even though I never owned it back then, but just all the singles that were released off of it was like my yeah. really, my entry, entry into pop culture as a whole of like and a probably, music, you know. Probably so. your introduction to Eddie Van Halen also. Uh, yeah, because it was the next year when, 19, when 1984 came out. And so that was, you know, when Jump hit, you know, a yeah. year later, that was kind of a, oh, hey. And then people were like, no, that's the same guy that played on, you know, yeah. oh, okay, that makes sense, you know. So, uh, yeah, but that, yeah, beat it and just, yeah, that forever will be tied to Panama, the, that trip to Panama city. So when it comes summer. on, you're just like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I yep. know exactly. I can, I can visualize so much about that trip just hearing that one song. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. 
So my first one, you know, as I've already said, I'm originally from a small town in Kentucky, about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes north of Nashville. And so every summer vacation was spent going back home to there, you know, spend most of the summer there. And the little radio station in town had an ancient DJ of some sort. And it must have been his little inside joke because every time we were pulling into town, it was always right around sunset or, you know, just before sunset. Inevitably, when I tuned into that radio station, it was Don Henley with Sunset Grill playing. That's a good one. Yeah. And so, you know, it, I've kind of associated pulling back into my hometown with that, that song and another one that seemed to come right after it. I used to so. park cars at the Sunset Grill here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know, yeah. Nashville. We have a Sunset Grill here. <clears throat> not so. anymore. Well, yeah, no, no. that's true. It's not there any longer. No, it's, it's not there anymore. So. Like so many other things. But that's, Don, Don Henley's Sunset Grill is is one. You know, he put out so many good songs. Just uh, the other, uh, I was just listening to, didn't he do Smuggler's Blues? No. No, Glenn that's Fry. Glenn Fry. Well, whatever. The other, They're both in the same Other band. Eagle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the Eagles. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, Smuggler's Blues. No, but yeah, that... um. It was, it was either, his, I can't remember if it was his second or if it was his third, um, Building the Perfect Beast, his solo stuff. Yeah. Uh, because like his, uh, I, I think it was his second solo after the Eagles broke up because the first one had uh, Dirty Laundry on there. Yeah. But when you go and look at Sunset. Uh, oh, what was the one that was the big hit? Boys of Summer. Yeah. Boys yeah. Of that Summer. was on Building the Perfect Beast as well as Sunset yeah. Grill. And right. it, I've got a vinyl copy of it in there. I mean, it's one of those was like, dude, this thing. Wasn't that also the last worthless evening? No, that was on uh, Into the Innocence, which oh, came okay. out a few years later. Now that one, that one's got like, I think they released either five or six singles off of that and you would know every single one yeah. of them. So, and, yeah. but yeah. So what's your next one? So if you know, if you remember things about my past, you know, that I used to love to roller skate. Yes. I still love to roller skate, you know, Brody yeah. can roller skate. It, I was, it, he I, told me he could. And then the first time I, I was like, Holy shit, he can actually really roller skate. I, so. I can't. <laughs> and the diabetic neuropathy has just made it that much uh, worse. Being fat. Yeah. Listen, I can, I can actually move now. Yeah, I mean, it's a, now I will tell you, um, are, we, are not we talking, like, are we talking like Eric from that 70s show type skating? Um, with like the booty shorts and the suspenders. <laughs> All right. Well, I will tell you. <laughs> was, it, was he doing? Was he doing roller disco? Yeah. Most of the time, disco. I was skating. I was wearing parachute pants. There you go. Okay. Uh, I had a favorite pair of red ones with uh, with black down the side and mm-hmm. black zippers. Zippers. Yeah. You see, my parachute pants were all black. Yeah. All black. I never owned a pair of parachute pants. So. You know oh. what? There's still a website you can buy them now. Uh, I've, I've been saying I'm going to get a pair. So I think work <laughs> work would love it if I showed up one day in that. No, I think, anyway, I think my parachute pants are behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are long gone. Right now, I, <laughs> I, I parachute gone. won't even fit around me. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, I, I shop at um, big and my big and talls at Nashville Awning and Tent. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> well, they might have parachute pants. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. back in 1986, what we were just talking about Van Hagar. Uh huh. You know, um, all right. Which one? This is a fifty-one fifty. Album. Fifty-one so fifty. Which song? That's a good dreams. One. Okay, that's that's a good one. I, you know, it was one that the first time I heard it, we were skating, and mm-hmm. I, okay, this is pretty sad to say, yeah. I was on a skate team, and uh, we were at practice. <laughs> yes, I'm a twelve year old at skate practice. Hey, you know what? The, we all have embarrassing. You know that, like that 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 we laugh about it, but I'm like, no, that's actually kind of. Let's put it this way. Cool, I was active you know? for once in my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been active since. But uh, so Dreams came out and I was, yeah, uh, and one of the, we had this teenager that was, uh, played, uh, was the DJ mm-hmm. and he was like, Hey, have y'all heard this song? And he played it. I was just like, Whoa, yeah, this is awesome. And then, I mean, throughout the rest of that summer, I mean, probably four or five times a night he would play that song. Cause he's like, I'm playing what I want to hear. You know, and this is not on my list, but you know it's another good song and it goes in with this uh, that's on that same album. Summer Nights. Yep. Well, our hot thanks. summer nights is that no, what it's just summer, summer nights. nights. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Okay. For no, go, okay another one. No, no, no. I, I say it's not on my list, but I just yeah. that, that made me think. It was like no, that you know. We're, summer we're just trying. We're just trying to take radio. from him. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that one's a, actually it's a on great my song. List. Yeah. It, there's uh, not a bad song on that album. Really isn't. No. Fifty one fifty was. Amazing. Love walks in. Yep. I absolutely yeah. love. Why can't this be? Love. I know, but that, I mean, just yeah, it's I know. perfect. You know, I did summer camp basically every summer, and you were allowed a boombox and like a handful of tapes. And right, the year that that came out, that was one of the tapes I took to summer camp. With and a me. flute? No, <laughs> okay. no, no, no. 
I was a drummer. Thank you very much. Oh, he, has a red, he has a round head, so I can understand why you got that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, you can take drumsticks. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm, a, I'm a drummer, but I did date. Do all your stories start at one time at band camp? <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them. But you know, it's but yeah, the, we took I, 5150 was one of the albums I took. The other one I remember was being um, oh that album from the DOC. I can't remember. The DOC, come on! From he was one of the peripherals around the guys from NWA. Oh I, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But he's uh, the one that had to car wreck and it messed yeah, up I'm his vocal to, cords. I can't remember what the name of the, the album name of the, is. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the. I don't know. While he's looking that yeah. up, I'll go into mine. Um, I guess I'm going to stay in the '80s on this one, uh, which I do jump when I get into the later stuff. I'm going to jump into the '90s pretty hard. No one can do it better. I think is what the there album go. was. I thought you made him jump into the 90s. <laughs> 1988. So I'm jumping ahead five years now. So you're 14. Uh, summer between... Freshman and sophomore year. No, summer between um, eighth grade and high school. Okay. That, at the very end of that eighth grade summer, or spring semester... Uh, Poisons um, opened up and say ah mm-hmm. was released. Damn it! <laughs> also on my also list. on my list. Yeah, no, which one? Nothing but a good time. Okay, not the one. That I, song. Yep, that's the one I had. Not me. That song, <laughs> like that was all summer because it's the thing is that came out and then also uh, Def Leppard's um, Hysteria. Hysteria came yep. out. All right, it, was, it had been out. Yeah, but pour some sugar on me. Yeah, hit yep. hard that summer, and that was kind of like the two songs that were like dueling, like all all summer of like which one of these is going to be the summer song, you know, type thing. But nothing but a good time is still still on that list for me. Love that song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently we all have a song from that. Album. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, what when we were graduating from. Um, junior high the school always threw a great big you know end of school yeah, party you know yeah. and i remember that one being on the playlist and i also remember there being rock me amadeus by yeah, Falco. Okay. Yeah, yeah 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 so that's that's the one i go to now that's a good one rock me amadeus and not the, which version not the american 12 inch version okay the right. original okay german yeah, original language german lang- yeah yeah you know the thing is is there was like three different mixes of that song, yes you know because there was like there was the original, there was the 12-inch American release, and then there was... There was a radio edit that yeah. put in a bunch of like facts about Mozart. Yeah. And it, it was like not on any of the albums. It was right. weird. Like I remember hearing that on the radio and then like hearing the album cut later. Like, whoa, whoa, this is not... What you, it's not the one I remember yeah. hearing. It's you like, know, it's a, oh, well, we should teach some history with our yeah, pop no. music. <laughs> no. So I've done two cheese metal. Ones, okay, right? now we're going to do something different. Huh? Um, we're going we're gonna to shake it up just a skosh. Still from the from 1990, mm-hmm. I was trying to impress another young lady. <laughs> There's a lot of that. There's a I, lot I, of that. I'm starting to pick up a theme here. Is, I think we could all tell those stories, though. It's a <laughs> I didn't write. A, I didn't tell somebody I wrote a song. Uh, and, uh, but uh, oh, <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> 1990, Harry Connick Jr. Oh. Recipe for Love. Okay. Okay. You know, I wondered how long before we got to Harry Connick Jr. Because really, yeah, nothing wrong with, with you. Connick that Jr. was the you know. I know. Listen, uh, he only he well he's done I don't know how many albums, but there were about four or five right in the early nineties, late eighties that were just I mean she, unbelievable. Star, she, Star Turtle. Oh, you know, that one was. Yeah. Oh, that was the worst one. Though. I liked some of the stuff on there. Just because it was so weird, right? You know, it was but the, the "We Are in Love" album, though, yes. was just the, yeah. we, the, that one. And then the "When Harry Met Sally" soundtrack, yeah, was just like yeah. whoa. But "Recipe for Love" was one of those because if you hear it, nice, you, 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 it's an upbeat jazz. Absolutely, too. yeah, so, yeah, love yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. All right, quick story on that. I know you've, uh oh, you know what I'm. Our friend, you know, Corey. Corey's been on the show. Those you listened to, it's been a while. But he's, he's been, been on, on the, the show, show before me. It's been yeah, it's been a long time ago. Damn. It was, that was years ago, uh, literally. But there was this picture that came up in on Facebook a couple of years ago when I was still on there that one of Corey's friends tagged him in, like somebody that he knew from like way back. You know, it looks like it might be in a dorm room when he was at Western. Okay. This is the most Corey picture ever. This might be a little more inside baseball with you, with us here, but it's just like everybody else try to imagine this, okay? Corey is kicked back on the dorm bed, okay? He's got this big stupid grin on his face like he always has. 
he's wearing a Chicago, like the band Chicago t-shirt, which is That's sad already. Tucked into ahead. his his jean shorts with the, with the rope belt or the uh, the braided belt, you know, okay. very very early that 90s. That he probably too. got from Stone Mountain like everybody else in Nashville did. And in one hand, he's holding up a copy of The Vampire Lestat. And in the other, he's got a copy of We Are In Love. <laughs> and I'm like, that is the most Corey picture I have ever seen. I could not put together a more Corey picture than that right Wait. there whatsoever. <laughs> Wait, was he wearing his New York Yankees ball cap? No, he was not. He didn't okay. have a ball cap on, but it was just like, oh my God, I cannot Because there was the New York. I am though. so happy that this picture hey, exists. <laughs> do not hate on Birkenstocks. I still have I, a set of Birkenstocks. I cannot wear Birkenstocks. They're comfortable. I don't want to see anybody's I, feet. No, no, no. no Mine, mine are closed toed. Well, they're like they more, need to be closed footed. Still, yeah. They're more like clogs. <laughs> do you wear you wear uh, um, socks with them? So. No, <laughs> no. Why would I do that? I don't know. I only wear socks with Crocs. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Crocs were used in the movie Idi- Idiocracy yeah, because Mike Judge said that he wanted to find the stupidest shoes that he could that 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 no one would actually wear. Yeah. And then they became huge after that fact. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding. I've always thought Crocs were dumb. Oh, so they're ugly like, looking, yeah. but you want to talk about comfortable? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, who are we up we're to? We're up to now? back to your two. It's, it's your turn. No, he just. No, well, I no, just did. You just did. I did, did Recipe Harry, for Love. You did. Okay, Harry so Conic. I guess it's so my it's your turn. turn. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. Sorry. Not Harry Potter, Harry Connick. <laughs> did I say Harry Potter? I think you said Harry Potter. Wow, Harry Potter's version of there that would be very interesting. I must need more coffee. There's plenty more over there. Yeah. I'm kind of, I didn't write any of mine down. I just surprise, kinda surprise. I know. I'm, I'm always a, you know. So disappointed. I'm always kind of a, hey, just turn on the microphones and see what happens. Sometimes it's gold. Just give him one of your artists. He'll pick one of them <laughs> off of He does this every time we do a list. You know, it's funny because I, I keep trying to think of something from like the early 90s. Like as I was graduating high school, you know, we graduated, you and I graduated in 92. And I'm trying to remember something from that summer that was like a really big for me. But I really can't because that I associate with the, I want to uh, sex you, know, you up some, like color no, me bad. No, hate that's, that, that was totally his jam. I, yeah, I know it I, was color me bad. No, admittedly, I do love me some boy bands. Color me bad is not one of them. So he's that's, got the uh, worst taste in music and TVs. Yeah, whatever. Well, I don't know. Apparently I do. Y'all made a whole <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave that open ended. <laughs> I guess I'm going to jump to the, late 90s somewhere <laughs> summer of 1999 and i'm probably going to come back to this a couple of times because there were several songs in here that and yeah it's all like pop crap i'll admit it yeah the one i'm going to right off the bat though is lfo summer girls oh, <laughs> Brody, anything i've said about your musical choices i apologize right now i will accept that and I don't want to hear any more shit. From <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know you like girls at work. I can't. and Fritch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, I'm stepping back okay. at this point. I gotta, I gotta let's, say, let's just skip that one. So I, you know I, you like it. <laughs> I mentioned there was another song that usually got played after Sunset Grill when we were pull by, pulling back into my hometown. And it was inevitably Pep Shop Boys, West End Girls. Oh, that's a good one. Too. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a roll the windows down and kind of turn it up and cruise around a little bit. Well, I don't know about that. I, I like, <laughs> I mean, you must have really been in a small town. I like, yeah. I like some Was of the electro. Glasgow? Yeah. Glasgow. I, I like a lot, you know, some of that early electro pop, you know, techno type stuff. I like the pet shop. Like you know, a razor. I would. <laughs> eh, that That's, that's going a little too far. Too far. I was, I was trying to be nice, but you Spand- went a little too far. <laughs> Spandau blue. Cool. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I said Pet Shop Boys and that type of stuff. Well, you got Brody. Frankie goes to Hollywood, right? So, Dave, relax. 1992. Okay. Okay, so you're, you're hitting the 90s. Uh, I'm hitting okay. the 90s now. <clears throat> Summer after my freshman year. No. Summer before your freshman year. No, no. It was, okay, so it was 93. Okay. The, the album came out before, okay. but the song that I'm about to talk about is Pain Lives on, Lies on the Riverside. Live. Live yeah, off of the mental oh, jewelry. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Present, it, it was. That whole album is amazing. But that one song, I was with a young lady. I was mm-hmm. fancy about mm-hmm. anyway, and we had gone to Fall Creek Falls. And every time I hear that song now, I think back to our trip at Fall Creek Falls. 
Nice. nice. And that song is just plus, you know, you know, if you know anything about live where they where they were and then now where Ed Qualtrick yeah. is yeah, in no, his it's, life, it's yeah. just very, very different. So, yeah, yeah. He's great album. A hardcore Buddhist forever, and now he's a Christian. Yep. And it's a uh, um yeah, you can see that happen every once in a while. Sometimes you see it go the opposite way, you never know. He's, yep. I'm trying to... He's just going to pick one out of the air. That's what he does. Now, you know... I, if you'd listen to the podcast, you'd know this yeah. already. Yeah. Going back to the summer of 99, I got another one. O-Town? No. That would have been O-2. Uh, <laughs> it's probably Butterfly. He knows that. No, no, that was a one <laughs> That was a one. Okay. The fact that he knows what year that is, is I I can pull that crap out with no problems. Uh no, um Sugar Rays every morning. Sellouts. Well, I don't care. It's, that's that's a great song, man. I love that song. It's a I have a whole like I could like go through I've got a whole playlist of like nineteen ninety nine. It's a lot of like pop, you know, and that kind of stuff. And yeah, you know, it's just for whatever reason that summer especially just kind of caught my attention of like, this is i'm enjoying this pop music more than anything else because it seemed like everything else was kind of in a lull at the time i mean there was stuff that came out later in the year that you know i was like oh no no now we're starting to get back into you know like once uh the fragile was released you know i was like oh, yeah now we're back into you know something uh yeah lives um uh, uh the distance to here came out that mm-hmm. that summer like late in the summer you know which dolphins cry and you know i love that's probably my favorite album by them but for them, especially the first half of the year, and especially into the the summer, the late spring and into the summer, it's just like all that pop stuff. For whatever reason, was just like no, I said it was just a time. You know, a lot of it had to do with the fact that you know I was what twenty five years old at the time. I was working. That's when I first started working at CD Warehouse. You know, I was like I had a job I really loved. You know, it was at my Jeep at the time, and it was just yeah. kind of one of those things where it was like it was nice just to turn on the top forty radio and drive around with the top down and you know, just enjoy what they were playing. And this is stuff that, you know, that, that was coming out, you know? So, yeah. So yeah. What you guys, um, I went back a little bit further, actually back kind of early eighties when we were living in Michigan and we were living in a house up on a Ridge within bike riding distance of the lake, the little town that we were living in was on, you know? So I spent summers literally on the lake, you know, fishing and swimming and all that. And I remember being, We'd always have the radio cranked up, and minute work with Down Under okay. was inevitably always in heavy rotation on the local radio station. It's a good song. It, it's, it's actually a decent album. the The one after it with um, Over, Overkill, Overkill is my Kill. favorite song by them. That's so on the next like, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, that's a yeah. I've got like two or three from that time period on the list. So that's one of the songs that so I just picked up a. Um, a, uh, a vinyl copy of this compilation from like 1984. It's called, um, I think it's called Let's Beat It or something like that. And it's uh, it's a um, fundraiser yeah. for a cancer, you know, for a, so whatever. And it's one of those, you got a line that's like, big hit, big hit, big hit. That song. It was like, the, yeah, it was it was like, like KTEL or something. Yeah, KTEL put it out. And it's all the original artists, you know, and I mean, it's just like. licensed them. Yeah, and it's like, you know, like, you know, Say 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 is on there and, you know. and uh, But that uh, Overkill, it, it's a great song. And there's actually an acoustic version with Laszlo Bain. That, that's probably the my favorite version of that. The He did that on um, Scrubs. Yeah. You know, it's, did you ever see that? The, you know he did the he scrubs. Was on there all he, the time. Yeah, you know, he did the scrubs theme song. Yeah, but there was an episode early on, like because we were living together. Because you guys watched it, you know, yep. you know, Toad would watch it, and I was always catch it as I was walking through. Where he's a, uh, he's, I think he's dead. Like he's he in a, several episodes. Yeah, but he was like a cadet, and like he literally like he keeps in uh, uh is it JD? JD. Is that, yeah, keeps seeing him. And he's like, you know, like he's like going on a gurney or whatever. He's got his guitar and he's doing overkill. Like he does the entire song, like through the opening. It's like the opening of the of the episode, you know. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I, uh, Land Down Under. That's a yeah, you know, that definitely is a, a time and place. That, that <laughs> so. was on the same album as, um, yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, cool. What you got? So nineteen ninety five. I had just moved up to Lexington, Kentucky. Was running a. Music land up Living there. Living in sanctuary. Living in the original <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> we'll have to tell that story at close some point. Close to the Taj so. Mahal of basketball. Uh, well, there's that too, but the, I think the sanctuary is more famous than that. That <laughs> you know. In some, well, in some circles. In some circles, for go sure. Go Cats. But um, 
I had this guy working for me at the store and he was really into rap. And I was just like, you know me, I was, yeah. I was still cheese metal, maybe a little grunge here or there, but he kept playing these two songs. So it's, it's a twofer right now, but these two songs were huge hits at the time. At least one of them was the other one, probably not so I much. I know which one of them is. One of them is the crossroads. Oh, okay. Bone okay. thugs and harmony. Yeah. Okay. And the other is running. By the far side. Okay, I was completely off. I thought you were. I got five on it, but I think that was oh. different. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. That, yeah. That's an, yeah. The remix version yeah, of "I Got yeah, Five yeah, on yeah, It" yeah, yeah. is amazing, it, and that's a, that's a good one. You know, because when I think when I hear that song, I'm also back yeah. there. Yeah. But running and and the cross uh, the crossroads. crossroads. See you at the crossroads. Yeah, I think I Bone Thugs and Harmony doesn't get. Enough credit, the, the respect that they, they don't deserve. Yeah. Honestly, you know, first but, of the month, yeah, that? first yeah. of the month, or uh, or a rugged sluggish bone. Come yeah, on, that's a fucking, but that's I, a jam. You, you actually surprised me a little bit because I don't hear a lot of people talking about the Far Side, and that was another band that didn't get their due. They didn't. Their first album, I think, Bizarre, uh, Bizarre Ride, or. Something like that. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. Uh, but this one was off a of lab cab in California. And man, that just album. They were just, I believe they were ahead of their time. Yeah. A little too much. You know, nowadays, if if they would come out with this, I, th- oh, yeah, they w- yeah, I think yeah, they'd yeah, be, yeah, yeah. you know, no oh, they'd hits blow and up. stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, yeah you, you get those guys every once in a while. That's just like, oh, yeah, they were, <laughs> they were a little two on the cutting edge like like the rest of us yeah the rest of us just did not trickster the rest of us just didn't catch up to it in enough time you know so it was a it's fun to go back and listen to it it really is i tell you what i gotta go back back into the 80s because uh 1984 okay yeah my dad is not from but he grew up in eastern north carolina a little town and uh, we went back over there for a couple of weeks. I, we were gone for a couple of weeks. We, we started off there because one of his childhood friends was getting married. And then we went from there and we went on up the coast to, um, uh, we went on up to, uh, to Washington, D.C. And, you know, okay. kind of, you know, it was kind of one of those, like, all right, cool. You know, went and did, you know, the Smithsonian and different stuff like that and then came back, you know. Yeah. Um, and that was also during the time that the 84 Olympics were going on. So I associate all this in stuff, LA. Yeah, in LA. So yeah. I associate all this stuff together. But the thing that I really remember is being in that being in the car. And of course, it was me and my cousin John went with us. He's the same age as I am. And you know, this is before we had Walkmans to listen to our stuff. So we were just listening to the radio. And of course, we were like making my parents listen to you know top forty or whatever. Yeah. And. Prince's Let's Go Crazy was all over the radio. <laughs> that whole album I know. was all over when, the radio. When Doves Cry was the first single off of it, you know, and that had like kind of blown up in the late spring or whatever. We were, this was like, we literally were like in July and Let's Go Crazy just hit like a bomb, yeah. you know, and it was just all over the place. So yeah, I go from Michael Jackson in 83 to Prince in 1984. So. Yeah. So not much of a change, really. Well, yeah, a big step up is what it is. I love Michael Jackson, but it's, you know, yeah. Prince is so much further up that ladder. So. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the same time period is when I was talking about when I was living in Illinois, and I remember being over to front. You know, you were you would ride your bikes everywhere. You'd, you'd be mm-hmm. at this friend's house. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were at, we'd show up at one friend's house to be able to watch MTV because his parents sprung for cable right. and all that. And the two videos I remember being in heavy rotation about the same time as that Minute Work song is Stray Cat Strut okay. from Stray Cats and Rockin' the Casbah <laughs> from The Clash. Yeah. Yeah. MTV was a fun, weird little corner of the world. MTV in the, the first three or so years, you just never knew what you were going to see. No. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. So, and too bad what happened to it. So. Yeah. So in, I'm trying to look at the year here. It was 86. Okay. I was living with my grandmother at the time. And she was on one side of the house. I was on the other side of the house. And uh, so I'd turn up my radio a little bit louder. Mm -hmm. And if you remember on Sunday nights here, they had a shop or a show called Metal Shop. Yes. Yeah. Metal Shop. Yes. Hey, I'm the butcher, Jarky Kendall. And so, and they they had the three most valuable metal of the week. Right. 
Yeah. And I would tape that, you know, was on one of my Maxell tapes. Yeah, exactly. But usually on a Panasonic boombox or yeah, something yep. like that. And so they were like, the number one most valuable metal this week is, and I was like, I never heard of this band. It was Queensryche, Walk in the Shadows. Okay. Nice. And I will say, because that summer had just kicked off for us, and I was like, because it was Sunday nights at 10 o'clock, you know? Midnight. Or was it midnight? Yeah. Uh, or it was 11. It was, it was 11. 11 uh, yeah. It, it went from 11 to midnight, because right. then I would listen to Late Night Lunatics on 107 from midnight to 1, and be dead tired the next day at school. And so and so I was like, okay, I am gonna stay up. Summer's here, you know, and all that. So I remember wearing out that tape that I had made of that, so much so that because uh, I would play it really, really loud. And my grandmother, who, oh, yeah. who was... <laughs> I'm sure she loved that. Oh, yeah. She was just like, you know, what is this? And is it Satan's music? I was like, I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe. But that, that one right there takes me back to 1986, living with her. Okay. And, and then, of course, having to do all the work around the house because she was too old to yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. That's what, that's what uh, kids and grandkids are good for. Yeah, hey, apparently. come here. Oh, yes. yeah. I got to jump to, like, the very end of the 80s. Okay. And I'm probably going to step on something for you. All right. Again, is what he meant to yeah, say. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess this would have been about... I'm used to it by 89. now. 89... Mm-hmm. I had a couple of friends I went to church with that were, you know, I was 15 and the two of them were 16, 17, somewhere around in there. I remember that they both had driver's license. I didn't, you know, one was the pastor's son, which, you know, those are always good stories. <laughs> you hang out with the pastor's kids and then it's like, <laughs> nothing like hanging out with a PK. Yeah. You're going to get uh, worse trouble than you ever got in your but life. But the three of us, like this, that summer, you know, it was one of those things, like I said, they both had driver's license and, and access to vehicles, you know. And so we were always jumping in somebody's car and, and going somewhere, you know, whether it was going to the mall or it was going to go fishing or, you know, go to Opryland or whatever it was. And we were always jumping in the car and going somewhere. And the three albums that we listened to the most during that time period was Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, because it was the era, you know. Um, It was Skid Row's first album, and it was um, Easy E, Easy Does It. I have a similar (laughs) story. NWA. So every time that I hear Boys in the Hood, <laughs> it reminds me of being okay. in that car or a car with one of the with all three of them, somebody's car, and that song coming on, and three middle class suburban white kids, you know, the boys screaming in the, the lyrics. Always oh, yeah. you gonna pump in that trash and we'll pull your car, you know, just type yeah. stuff, and it's like, all right, you know. So yeah, that was of okay. course that whole easy easy does it album is good. There's you know, well, since and you there's know. one song in there particular that would never get airplay today because <laughs> <laughs> don't, uh, it don't matter. Uh, is that the one about the transsexual? Oh no, not that one. Just you don't know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, well, since you went there, I'll. Isn't that a Tone Loke song that no. goes there? Well, yeah, well, that's uh, what is it? Uh, Funky Cold Medina. Dina goes there too. You yeah. Know? Well, since you you went there, yeah. And I know I've told this story before, but when we were living in Illinois, mm-hmm. um, the town on the weekends had a cruise route, and it would literally go down in front of the grocery store, and you would there was a kind of a turnaround there, and so the you know you do the turnaround, you go back down in front of the grocery store, you go across the train tracks. So we had an active train track in the middle of the cruise route, and you'd hang a left and go down two blocks and turn around and come back and do it all over again. And there was a couple of guys that, you know, this was every weekend. We'd go hang out to cruise route and cruise around. And the two albums that I remember being in the car and on heavy rotation the entire time we were there was, it, I'm going to pick the song Straight Out of Compton from NWA mm-hmm. and Paranoid from Black Sabbath off the, oh. We Sold Our Souls for Rock and Roll. Okay, that song. Yeah. And like yeah. Straight Out of Compton, we'd listen to it all the way through and then we'd pull it out and immediately put in We Sold Our Souls for Rock and Roll. And let's do it Which all the way. A great album. And we would just go itself, back yeah. and forth the entire time. Yeah. It is straight out of Compton wound up in that rotation some, but not as much as that Easy E album for whatever reason. So. Yeah. So just to play off of that, it's funny that three middle aged white, white guys men, I know we're talking yeah. about <laughs> because <laughs> about about but, original gangster rap. But know? we I mean, it's like yeah. <laughs> we didn't know each other when we were younger. And in high school, two of my friends and I 
two other white guys yeah. just driving around. Right. By the way, one was a preacher's kid. Now that yeah, I think there about you go. It. So, <laughs> um, and the and the the three album or the two albums that we always had on rotation. Of course, you're going to laugh because you always do. Um, Still heart. Okay. You know you can't go yeah. wrong with this. And then I'll never let you go, man. Yes. <laughs> and then I don't remember which album it is, but I remember the title of this uh, song was "Don't Matter, Just Don't Bite It." Oh, that's um um. It don't matter. It just don't bite it. Um, isn't that um? I thought it was an NWA song, but it might it? be. That might be Two Life Crew for all. That's why I thought it was Two Life. Crew. I, I was thinking Two. I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was. I thought I was almost positive. But it was. It was amazing that. Oh, dude. We all had those. <laughs> we all had similar. I almost picked up. You talking about Two Life Crew? I found a the twelve inch single for "We Want Some Pussy" mm-hmm. here recently. And the only reason I didn't buy it is because it was scratched all hell. And I was like, oh. no, that is NWA. Is it NWA? Okay. I, okay. Thought, okay. I thought it okay. was. Well, that, have, that would have to be off of Straight Outta Compton, I guess. Um, or is it off of... Um, that's the Greatest Hits album. I'm trying to find it. Uh, well, it wouldn't have been a Greatest Hits at the time. It, it would either be... be it, it was either... Oh, shit. I know I have 100 Miles and Running. Okay. That's that's more likely than okay. what we had. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I have, I've said this, you know, many times that when, like I was telling that story earlier about picking up that LL Cool J album, you know, and the guy like looking at me like, well, why is this white boy buying this? You know, it's like, yeah, no, that was the thing I've always said about like, especially with like, uh, like the NWA or Easy e or, you know, yeah. ice T was another, you know, like the, the, the justice, uh, the just ice, you know, mm-hmm. album, you know, that kind of stuff is like those were things that like yes I was listening to Metallica I was listening to Slayer I was listening to uh, yeah Vanilla you know, Ice well, no but I mean but it was like Guns N' Roses <laughs> yeah. or uh, or any of that kind of stuff but then also in that Young in the MP. cassette in the cassette holder was NWA and Eze e and and all that stuff it was all right there together because yeah. you know again you're a teenager you're looking for the stuff that's going to scare the bejesus out of your parents and 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 the gangster rap was just starting to come on the scene and really scaring the bejesus it put, out of it middle pushed, America it pushed the envelope which <laughs> yeah, is what we wanted to exactly, do exactly you know yeah I mean come on who didn't get some kind of joy out of playing fuck the police when you're rolling down the street with the light with your your, radio, your uh, windows down just hoping that maybe the cops are going to hear it okay <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> and the problem is if they did hear it they were oh you were in trouble you yeah were I know I saw I, I, my yeah. dad was a police officer so um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, he probably took that personally he may probably. have <laughs> it's just like when um, um, Body Count's first album came out you know, uh, Cop oh, Killer yeah. Cop Killer was like the song that was like alright here we go you know that's <laughs> if you were looking to get pulled over those were the ones yeah, to play yeah I know um, whose turn is it? Is it mine? Um, you, yeah, it's yours. Okay. No, no, it's yours. Well, I sort of jumped in on the whole, you know, being a fat white guy. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, mean, so that's again. The, I don't really have many more, but I, yeah. this last one is from the 2000s. Okay. And that's only because one of you was there. Oh, okay, it's me. So what do we do? <laughs> as you know, Dave, we didn't hang out as much as we should have. Dave never hung out. What are you talking about? Part of that was me trying to save my own butt. Yeah. Well, there is that. I, but, I uh, could see the hurricane coming, and I would, <laughs> I would nope out in a hurry. That was the whole thing. If you if you want to use the you want to use the the hurricane analogy, Dave was one of those people on the bridge trying to get back off the island of the mainland. While we Brody were, and I were sitting down on the beach with you know with with, with the a, surfboard, yeah, going, with a, let's go, and, and a case of beer, just like all right. How's this one going to go? It's like <laughs> <laughs> but in two thousand, I think I've come out better for it. Go ahead. In two thousand and three, um, I started dating who is now my wife, mm-hmm. uh, and we just celebrated nineteen years in a row. I'm in very a row. excited. Oh, Congrats! Go. Thank you. But um, Dave, you're not that far behind that though. <laughs> uh, no, I'm coming up on sixteen. Yeah. So. And by the way, none of my friends thought I would last a year, let alone 19. I gave you five. Okay. <laughs> well, still. But so there was a song that, that you, came You and out. I are one, some of the few that have one wife. Uh, well, no, second, no. I'm on my second, second wife. Second? Yeah, yeah. He's, on, he's number two. Ooh, I'm ahead. <laughs> I'm winning. Yeah. You know, technically, Corey's only had one wife. So. <laughs> If you yes, want to go by <laughs> by most wives, but, then the other person sitting at this table, I've got two. Yeah. Yeah. Corey, you get right. Rob in here. What are you talking about? He, oh, he's shit. on his third. Corey's looking for a second. Anyway, yeah. so the the song is one that I started listening when I was with her, and we actually it was the first song we danced to at our wedding. 
a thing called or uh, I believe uh, in a, a thing, thing called, called love, love by the darkness. <laughs> Although I don't I remember the, you guys playing that at your, at your wedding, and I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. it, it is so cheesy it is. and everything. The first album's very cheesy, but if you go and listen to some of the deep cuts, especially after um, Roger Taylor's son started playing drums for him, they got better. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, I just that song takes me back to the Traveler's Rest. Yeah, hot hot May 22nd day of 2004 and we danced our asses that off. was the day that I officially became uninvited to anything that your your uh, father-in-law was. side note <laughs> side note one thing I have learned is you do not you this, should have known better I should you have. should have known better <laughs> I thought maybe you guys would be on your best behavior but do not put disposable cameras on the table or they will <laughs> go take pictures pictures of their own penises and try to talk the father of the groom into taking one of his own he thought it was hilarious the so. only person the only person Person that we know would not do that would have been Bunny because yep. we would have well him and Cornell both but yeah. you know well Cornell was not at our wedding he was wasn't no, he? he wasn't I thought he was no okay that's right because your wife didn't like no <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah that was uh, on a side note <laughs> there's been a lot of them oh yes okay. go ahead it wasn't just that yeah I grabbed a camera. I went and grabbed multiple cameras and handed them out to people and said, all right, everybody go in the bathroom. (laughs) Now, the two girls that did it, I just don't know who they were. So, see, Dave, all the time you give me so much crap about not being at your wedding, you might have gotten off really easy. The fact (laughs) that I had to replace a groomsman a week before the ceremony was kind of a problem. Mm Mm-hmm. It's okay. I've been in a groomsman in both of his weddings, and you see how they worked out. That's so. true. <laughs> yeah, I, and he was also in both of his weddings, and they didn't work yeah, out. Yeah, they didn't work out too well either. So it's yeah, I was at the first one. I was at the first yeah. one. I think it's your turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you just did the, the darkness. Uh, I'm trying. I mean, because it's funny because after a little while, it all kind of starts running together. That doesn't but, surprise me about you at all. I will tell you this one. Um, 2000. And this is... And it's funny because it's not a song that's that was released that year. Um, but, you know, in 2000 when uh, Almost Famous came out. Oh. Uh, Tiny Dancer. Yeah. Like, that really... I mean, it was one of those things that, like, I hear that song, I'm immediately right back there again, you know, in the year, in that, that summer. I'm surprised so. you didn't pick the actual song from Stillwater. No, no. Black but, Dog. Uh, fever dog. A fever dog. Yeah. Fever dog. Black yeah. dog's a Zeppelin. Yep. Uh, and if I never hear that fucking song ever again in my life, it's, it's played to death. But yeah, Tiny Dancer by Thank Elton John. Thank you, KDF. Yeah. Uh, Elton John's Tiny Dancer just, it does. It takes me back to that 2000 summer like, every time. Okay. So, yeah. So what you got, Dave? Um, going back to living in Illinois. Before I got my license, we lived out on the edge of town. And for me to be able to do anything in the summer, because mom worked, I had to get on my bike and ride miles into town. And up on the square, there was this little place that did car stereo installation, but Mm -hmm. they also had like a front where they had like records and tapes and all that type of thing. And I remember going in there one one day and just kind of looking through the tapes and all that. I pulled up this out, pulled this tape out and it had this skull looking dude sitting on the front with like a nuclear bomb going off in the back. And I looked at the, I looked at the guy at the counter. I was like, what is this? He goes, dude, that's Megadeth. Mm -hmm. I was like, is it any good? He goes, what do you listen to? Well, I was like, I've I've got ride the lightning, you Mm -hmm. know, in my Walkman. He's like, Oh, hold on. I got a copy of this open. And he put it in the store player and when Peace Cells came on mm. and started playing, I was like, oh, I got to have a copy of this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Megadeth. That's a... Peace Cells. But who's buying? Yeah, that... uh, You know, they're they're more famous for later albums. Yeah. But that is a solid, yeah. solid album. Uh, it really is. Uh, Megadeth is kind of... I know Brody's not a huge Megadeth fan. Uh, I you, like Dave Mustaine. Are yeah. you more of a Metallica guy? No, I mean they're they're both okay. They're not cheesy. Yeah, for it's me. there's not enough Aquanet around for them. So. Oh, so you're more of like a Motley Crue, Poison. Um, you get well, you know, Queen's Reich's one of my top, and yeah. Rat is my other top. So from those, you know, stages, you can figure I out. I like Rat. Yeah. I remember kind of that same 
around. Your was, wife doesn't like red. Though. No, she hates red. <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Cause, frankly, I'd like to be able to go home and not get stabbed. Um, I can't wait to hear this story I'll, later. I'll tell on. you off air. Off air. Uh, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for getting me in trouble yet again. This is why I didn't hang out with you guys a lot because this this type of stuff. Um, no. But kind of mm. one of those summers in Illinois. It was Christmas yeah. night, nineteen ninety. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. It's one of my favorite things. To I do. will, I will <laughs> murder you and leave your body in the HVAC system. But Motley Crue Theater of Pain, one of those summers riding yeah. around, listening oh, to that yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, I was actually going to get into um, uh, when the Girls, Girls, Girls album yes. was released wild side or both girls 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 was more but of wild a, side but wild side is i have more summer memories with that one than i do girls 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 my memories so. of wild side is i was in junior high at that point and i figured out that if i could eat my lunch fast enough i was able to sneak off down to the band room and get on the drum kit and play drums the entire lunch hour with my Walkman in. Mm-hmm. And one of the songs that I would always practice to was Wild Side. Such a good song. It yeah. really is. So. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're a great band. I'm so, they'll be in the Rock and Roll Hall. Of oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. They can't keep them out. So. Well, that is if they can prove that they haven't you know, played to all pre-recorded oh, tracks for man. their entire you know, career. And the fact that Nikki Six is now... There's information coming out that Nikki Six didn't even play the bass on like half of the first album. The... There has been a lot of documentation. A lot of it has been, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'll, I'll just say a this. lot of it. There, there's been a lot of stories that have never been made of, you know, that they've never been completely corroborated, you know, yeah. where's it? but I've heard many, many times over the years that Nikki six never played live, that there was either it was a, it was a track or there was somebody behind stage yeah. playing bass. And all I'm going to say at this point, with all of the controversy that's going on with Motley Crue and all that, yeah. I stand with Mick. I, I, do too. I, I pick Mick's yeah, side on I this. Would, yeah, I'd take Mick Mars over anything. And honestly, I cannot wait for his solo album to come out. With all the people I've seen that have been going in and cutting tracks with him and, and writing with him and all that, I yeah. cannot wait for this solo album to come out. Cool. So, you know, we were talking about albums. Mm-hmm. Some We went from songs sort of to albums. Yeah. 1996. Okay. Beautiful girl soundtrack. I know that sounds weird. No, no. We we I'm sure we y'all talked an, about it. We did it an before. episode about beautiful girls, yeah. And, and yeah, just earlier this year. But, so. but it's it's you that know, soundtrack. We talked about the soundtrack too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. One of one of the absolute best. But that you give me the remake of the song. Like, I know you love that song. <laughs> I do. You give me the remake of. Uh, can't get enough. Of can't get any yeah. by Afghan wigs and easy to be stupid because Lord knows it is for me. And then the the uh, I can corroborate that story. Yes, yes, yes you can. <laughs> and me and Mrs. Jones, those yeah. three songs, I just I, I'm taken back to 1996. Yeah, which is the year I joined the Navy. So. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't listen to that anymore. <laughs> that led to a couple of years I need to have yeah. removed. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, Are you out of ideas yet? Oh no, 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 no. I can I can always pull something out. Um, it's big enough. Yeah, it is. I have uh, a bar of soap to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> you still hanging on to that? That's been almost twenty years. Actually, that will be twenty years. This this. No, this, I'm not <laughs> hanging on to it. <laughs> that, it never made story. it out of the restaurant. That, that is that is a story for another day. So. Oh no, let me tell you. So, <laughs> hey, I don't mind telling stories. I think I think I might have actually told along. that story on here before. Move along. Um, Music. It, it's funny to go back to like. Um, oh, this is one you'll remember. Summer of 2001, okay? It's pre-9-11. You know, we're living together. Yep. Neither one of us had a job for a while, but we still found money to go drink all the time, you know? We were, and we were going downtown. We were... Um, uh, Bailey's. Remember, it had just <laughs> opened. Don't, don't yeah. Go, okay. Well, we're not going to tell stories from okay. it, okay? <laughs> but there was a... <laughs> that first night that we went down uh, there? Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, move along. <laughs> that's a great story. Move not along. a story for anyone outside of this music. here. Just in case my daughter was in snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> music. Get back to the music. <laughs> but no, they had... Because, you know, like, Bailey's would always have, like, some kind of, like, music. Like, they, they were always playing music videos. Yeah. And um, they... Um, 
so it was it was a loop. We were going we were going in there what three or four times a week, you know, easily. Which is funny because we had a Bailey's like even closer to where we lived, but we kept going to the one downtown. It was brand new, you know. It wasn't as crowded. They were having drink specials and stuff. And after and the first night, we wanted to yeah, go. yeah, no joke. And then on top of it all, it's just like everybody was downtown, you know. Uh, and so the song that I remember the most from that particular thing was um, Uncle Crackers Follow Me. That's the song the, you remember the most? I re- that one, and then there was the... Uh, because that they played... Every time I we went in there, they played it. You know, it was just always on. And the other song that is a close second, and I would not become a fan of these guys until much later, was Daft Punk's One More Not One More Time. You remember they used to play that video in there all the time. It's that like, one more time. Maybe I did drink away yeah, a lot maybe of those did. memories. But especially that Uncle Cracker song, because I mean, it was like always on in that place. And I, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a cute little pop song, you know? I mean, it's not like any world breaking thing or whatever, but it's like, yeah, it always reminds me of like pre nine 11, 2001 <laughs> summer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. So uh, <laughs> what you got? What you got? <laughs> um, like I said, we always went back to Kentucky for summer vacations and I'd had a friend that lived right around the corner from my grandmother that I'd known my entire life. And one summer, Close to 4th of July, because I think we were going over to Bowling Green, or we were going to run down the Tennessee state line to get fireworks, because you couldn't get the good stuff in Kentucky. Me and him and his cousin had a either an 80 or 81 Z28 Camaro, and it was that long, long hood yeah, version. Yeah. It was like blue, and like his brother, we all hopped in the Camaro and ran Did down. Did that still have the... Uh the metal bumpers or was that where they had gone to the no it's plastic. when they'd gone to the plastic gone to pl- okay yeah so it, i knew it was somewhere in that early like late 70s early 80s when they did it was that, like so. 80 81 yeah, maybe yeah, 82 yeah, okay and it was it was a nice car i know my 75 still had the metal on so yeah yeah but we'd gone down and we'd gone after it was like probably like around dinner time and we had gone down to the state line and we ended up just cruising around southern kentucky like all night long, like hitting Bowling Green and this little place called Sulphur Well that mm-hmm. used to be like a resort area because mm-hmm. it had sulfur water and it was like hot springs. And there used oh, to that's be, cool. there's this old abandoned hotel there that's like falling down. We, I mean, we just kind of cruised around and hit all these little weird places in um, Southern Kentucky. And the album that we were listening to almost all night was Journey's Greatest Hits. Okay. Because I think it was the only cassette in the car. So I'm going with separate ways. There you go. Worlds apart. There you go. You know, it, hot summer night, windows down, that song cranked up to whatever. It's too bad we don't still have the video of you and Toad recreating that music video. That so. was one of the greatest re- <laughs> recreations of a video I've ever seen. <laughs> we had so much fun that night. <laughs> that was also the one where he got down on he was like on his knees and had like uh, shoes underneath his knee and he was like singing mother <laughs> <laughs> like dancing <laughs> and probably still too tall for the oh, part dude. <laughs> it was hilarious yeah oh man oh good times oh yeah birdie <laughs> so I mean this is sort of the last one that I yeah we're sort kinda... of have but the um, when I was in the Navy as I mentioned earlier I was uh, stationed originally in you know, in the uh, Navy in Chicago, the, you can sail the seven seas. I did. You know, <laughs> Actually, I did not. I never. I never stepped foot on a ship. Anyway, I was going from Chicago to um, uh, Dam Neck, Virginia. It's right on the basically the the border of North Carolina and, and Virginia. And while we were driving there, uh, it was an, another buddy of mine. He we were getting transferred down there together. Um, something happened to the stereo in my car. And I was like, I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Story. <laughs> and and we couldn't turn it down. We couldn't turn it off. And it was just like, and we, I mean, it was just like, what is going on? Something, I mean, God just wanted us to hear this song. It was at the same time that this one radio station was changing formats. And so for 24 hours, they were going to play the uh, the number one most requested song of the, uh, of the year. So for about three hours i had to hear umbop oh no and i I do not to this day know what happened to my car but he and i were both like 
we've got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, and I was driving as fast as I could through the hills of West Virginia. Did it come back around? I said, I was just saying, come back around. Like, <laughs> it come oh, no. back around. <laughs> so it got to a just point wait, where it comes back around. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, oh, they've got to be okay. Oh, there's a. I thought there was a glitch. I didn't know that it was one of those things. Then yeah. I found out the easiest way to do that was to undo the battery to the car. Oh, okay, <laughs> we, that's what we had to do. We had to undo the battery. It wow. fixed everything. <laughs> yeah, because it resets. Everything. So if I hear yeah. umbop one more time, yeah. one, I, I'm just going. It's it's like the real life version of that uh, SNL sketch when they were on there. You, you remember that? No. Where it was, um, they were the musical guests. Yeah, Hanson, and um, it was uh, what's her name? Um, Helen Hunt was. The, oh. Um, and like they're getting on the an elevator, and Helen Hunt and another guy come in and, and they're and like they're they dressed in all black and they've got guns and they're like you know. And, you know, in the last six months, you know, umbop has been played, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of times, you know, and like we blame you for it. And so for that punishment, you have to be locked in this elevator and listen to your own song. And so it's like one of those things where it says like three hours later, it comes back and they're all like catatonic. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> 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 That's the way I felt. If I ever catch you with your phone unlocked and you're not looking, I'm changing your ringtone. <laughs> Note to self. It's in my pocket now. It's about and, like, and you can ask Corey, I'm patient. <laughs> Here, here's another good one. Okay, uh, this is this is a this is a me and Brody story. Uh, that same year, I guess it's not really summer, but it was kind of at the very end of the summer. We were both working at Party City, uh. and uh, yeah, because this was pre nine eleven. But mm-hmm. oh, uh, they had the piped in music also, you know, and you know where I'm going. <laughs> There was this song that they would play that irritated the absolute crap out of Brody every time. It's oh. better than Ezra's song. Which I love better than yeah, Ezra. Yeah, I know. Just know I love them. But this was like, they just put a new album and the song Extraordinary was on oh. there. Yeah, I know. Oh. And like, when he told me it was better than Ezra, I was like, you got to, no, it's not. And he's like, yeah, it is. And like, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So. <laughs> oh, it's like when I played you their cover of Laid. I, that was terrible. Yeah. Earlier. You know, the, the James song Laid. Yeah, yeah it's it's bad. Um, so I got to the point where like, if I was at work and Brody wasn't, and that song came on because it was one of those things that if like, if you put someone on hold, whatever was playing with it, I would call him and he'd be like, Hey, what's going on? I was like, Hey, can you hold on just a second? I'd put him on hold. Such <laughs> a dick. Song. And I come back later. He's like, I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> Such a dick. I almost mentioned that song a minute ago because oh, yeah. it was one of those that just drove me. But yeah. I know, I know, I know. <sighs> it was what on it was a Burger King commercial or something it wound up on, or is that or a McDonald's commercial or something? Because uh, it was one of those like months later. Where I'm like, oh, there's that song. Okay, again, yay. <laughs> but better than Ezra was so good in the. They 90s. were. I don't know they what were happened. So good, and then yeah. I don't know what happened. Now they did have another song on that album. Um, I know we're kind of getting off on tangent. There was there was another song that we heard that I was like, no, I actually like this one. Yeah. This one's really good. Misunderstood was it misunderstood? Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, and uh, I was like, yeah, this is a good song. So, uh, yeah, I guess that'll be. <laughs> mine so wrap it that. up for so, us. Yeah, here. sound to you. Oh, <laughs> you gonna make me wrap it up, huh? Well. Actually, you know what? Another one in that time period, um, because we saw them play at um, uh, River Stages. Yep. Um, Pat McGee band. Oh yeah, and remember because again they were they were pumping the song Rebecca. Yeah, no, that song. Was that good, song, yeah. dude. They would play it every day. I was like, dude, this. Yeah, and again, I hear that song. It takes me back to that store. That you know, that end of the summer with all the that, teenage girls yeah, that we had to that manage. Too, yeah, uh, but it was just <laughs> how how there was not a sexual harassment <laughs> complaint made during that year and a half period is just amazing <laughs> from somebody. <laughs> wow. Not, I, I was never guilty of that. Mm-hmm. I, I think we know who was guilty of that. The guy who likes summertime girls, <clears throat> uh, LFO or I have whatever. one word for you. Yeah. Don't say it. Muffin. I know you going to say it. <laughs> Even so, why don't you wrap it up for us? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> when we were living in Illinois, that was yes, when I Yes, I know where all the bodies are buried. So. <laughs> no, you don't. You know where most, but not all. <laughs> and that's where I made my switch over, basically, from hair metal into, you know, actual metal, Metallica, mm-hmm. the, you know, the big four and all that. And right before we were getting ready to go back to school, a buddy of mine slipped me a cassette tape. It's like, you need to check this out. And all I'm going to say is not. 
Oh, come on. You're going to need to give us more than that. <laughs> I am the man from uh, yeah, Anthrax. Anthrax. Yeah, oh. I, I, I knew it was Anthrax. I was trying to remember the song. Yeah, I, and I remember the music video. Yeah, that was... TV, uh, and they had, they had their mascot running around out in the audience of this huge crowd, you know, during it. It's the Among the Living album, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. And at the end of the video, the mascot takes the head off, and it's Ozzy. Mm-hmm. And everybody was just like... I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. But I, you know, they had three versions of it. They had the clean version, mm-hmm. which was the radio edit. They had the the dirty version, and then mm-hmm. they had the ultimate bad whatever yeah. it was. And you know what I am the law's about, right? Do what? I, I wasn't listening. The song I am the law by oh. Thrax. No, it's about Judge Dredd. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was actually like based off the comic books from there. The gotcha. Mid-80s, yeah, so, yeah. Because Scott Ian's a big comic huge book guy. comic book guy. Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking that I can't believe none of us said Dave Matthews. Why would we? <laughs> Why would we say LFO? I mean, I'm just saying. Unfortunately, no. that was the last concert I saw at Starwood before they tore down. Yeah, I've never liked Dave. Mike. Kiss uh, and Motley Crue. I uh, one at Starwood. A buddy of mine had free tickets. He was like, hey, you want to go with me? I was like, yeah, okay, I'll go. So I went to a, a, a show there once, and uh, the guy to my right got up on stage with Brett Michaels. Dave was at that show. I was at that. He show. was he he couldn't get over the barrier to get up there. <laughs> I, no, I I got over the barrier and security. You slipped through security. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was the last person that got up on. I stage. was over yeah. the barrier with you. Um, you slipped through, and the two security guys grabbed me and slammed me back over the yeah. barrier. Yeah. So yeah. So when I was up there, one of the first things I did was come around in the middle. I was like, "Where's Dave? Where's Dave? Where's Dave?" He's like, "Ah." <laughs> Yeah. What a show. Yeah. That yeah. was that was actually a really good show. It really that was. was. Uh, that was a good one. So. Good times. Um the Motley Crew <laughs> show. One of the first times I met Toad. Yep. Yeah. The Motley Crew show I saw there. Mm-hmm. Um we were up front. Tommy Lee was not with them. Yeah, yeah. That was that was an interesting show with some stories that yeah. I will not get into. <laughs> I saw Rat and Cinderella together there. I saw I saw a bunch of those bands there, like because there was that that four or five year period where there was all the tour, like the package tours, you know. And I went to like where I was ready yeah. to murder one of your ex girlfriends because I missed the band I paid my ticket to see because she wanted to get a kitten off the road. I know. I was. It wasn't even in the road. It was on off the road. So it was just like oh. I paid. No, my, not not who you're thinking of. I paid my so, money to go see L.A. Guns, and they were the opening. We act. got there. We they got were there. playing Ballad of Jane when we pulled up. And then they played one more song after we I got was inside. Pissed. Yeah, uh, I there there probably should be a body buried in the grass seating out there because of that show. I was ready to murder her. <laughs> that was an interesting show all the way around. So. <laughs> yep, let it go. Oh man, oh so many times, so many good times. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a. Uh, if I had actually done a little due diligence on this and actually, like, you know, you see what I put down up with a, uh, I'm sorry, I, we could be here for another hour easily um, because everybody has those songs. It reminds them of, you know, summer and, you know, it's it's funny. We did. Well, apparently, these songs don't just remind us of summer. They well, just, a we hear a song stuff. that took us somewhere. Yeah. And, and there's yeah. that too. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, we did an episode just about summertime, you know, like summertime memories, you know, what we associate with, you know, and it's funny because like, I can't remember if it was yesterday or this morning that I got up because my dog wanted outside. And so I opened the door and let him out. You know, he's out going to the bathroom and I was just sitting on the front porch and I was just like, it feels, it feels like summer. Like today was like that. I, I think it was this morning. It's like this, this is the first day it, not just being hot, but it humid feels like summer, you know, where it's just like, and it's funny every time, every year when this rolls around, no matter how old I get, it's funny every year when, when this time of year rolls around, I'm, I'm immediately feel like I just got out of school. I mean, no matter, I, mean, I just, I do, I, for whatever reason, I feel like I just got out of school for the summer and I've got two months or two or three months to, you know, whatever. It's probably because you're hanging around too many schools <laughs> during the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah. I've taken my I kid work, to and from, yeah. I work at a college. He works at so college, yeah. I've never gotten out of this. But summer. it's the same thing in the fall. Like in late August, all of a sudden I start feeling, I start getting this feeling of like I should be getting ready to go back to school. I mean, this is yeah. for whatever reason, I guess as long as I live, it's always going to be that way because I mean, it's the first 12 years of your life you're forcing. And then we went to college and, and it was more of that and of that institutionalized yeah and they've stayed in college, college longer than i did which is saying a lot That's so. amazing. <laughs> college is the same as prison if you stay there long enough you end up working at one yeah it's a 
I, that was the joke for a long time uh, for me. Was I, I made a, uh, you know, I really did make a career out of college for a while. Of like, I, I have friends like, that joke that they built a new library at Vol State off of the money I paid. Yeah, them, yeah. So. But I was just, I used to, I used to tell people, I was like, yeah, one of these days, I'm just like, one of these semesters, I'm going to go in and they're just going to be like, hey, we, we got you an office over here. You know, you're just, <laughs> yeah. we're putting you on payroll. You just go over here. You be student relations or something, you know, and just. Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, I love the summer. I really do. And uh, I walked out this morning and go, oh, it's summertime. This is the period of time that I turn into a vampire and <laughs> never go outside. I like it until about mid July when it really gets hot. And then I'm just like, oh, you know, being a redhead, uh, I'm, you know. Yeah, I, and I don't exactly tan either. So well, I've already had a chunk of skin cut off of me right. to get rid of the skin cancer. Yeah. So. so good times. I hate summer. It's too damn hot. <laughs> I'm a fall and winter person. I'm so. a winter person. Now, the darker it gets, uh, the sooner it gets dark, the happier I am. I like the long days. I really do. Like I, I'm enjoying. They're the all 24 hours. I know. I okay. I enjoy the long sunshine. The, okay. the long, the, the, the extended amount of sunshine. Let's put it that way. I'm really enjoying right now that it's not getting dark until like 8:30, for whatever reason. I don't know. I just it's just something about. It. But at the same time, I when it gets dark, like you know, like Four. starting. It, yeah, when it starts getting dark, I love that just as much. Yeah. You know, it, it's I don't know what it is now. I, it, I get tired of both of them after a while. You know, I'm like okay, let's move on to the next thing because I really hate the cold. I I freeze in the winter time. Oh, I'm so ho- I'm kind of hoping that my next endeavor makes me enjoy the summer a little bit more because I'm getting ready to do the riding portion of the motorcycle. The motorcycle yeah, I know, I know. Ride so, thing. It's a little a little hot. <laughs> right now it is what it I've is got to, I've got to get a a summer riding um, coat that's you know it's a little lighter weight and it's still you know they armored make, yeah it's armored yeah. but it, they and he wants it. a lot of fringe on it too yeah. well you know that he strikes me the the, guy. the um the the leather that I have you know the Harley that, that thing if I put it on right now I would bake out there I mean it's just, oh, it's just even with the zipper you know being able to un, you know with the, the vents and stuff it's just still it's just too damn hot so yeah, he's got to get something that's a little lightweight and still has the, the armor in it and everything. And so, so we went from music to motorcycle. Motorcycles. Welcome to the podcast. That's what this yeah. happens. It happens every time. I the guess fact I, that if this I'd is have listened more. The maybe, fact that this is the uh, really the only tangent that's happened is a miracle in and of itself. Okay, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Dave will tell you. I mainly blame him. <laughs> you know, Dave always blames. I get me, it. So. Thanks. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I appreciate the invite. You know something else we should probably talk about? It doesn't have to do with music, but it has to do with summertime. Uh oh. We should talk about the parties, dude. That's, no, <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time for that. No, no, on no, this no. one. There's a reason why we were fortunate we grew up in an era where there were no oh, there's cell phone there's, cameras. There's, there's pictures. Or, there's pictures. It's, unfortunately, I know unfortunately, there are pictures. There are, yeah. That's why I can never run for public office. I, I yes. Same I, I said that a long time ago. I will Fortunately it's not as bad as the younger generations with as much of the stuff that's available, but there, there is enough incriminating evidence that I'm like, eh, there's a reason eh. why I chose a profession <laughs> behind the camera instead yeah. of in front of it. Yeah. Well, you know, my porn career just didn't take off the way I hoped it would. So it was just, you know, anyway, <laughs> I don't even, <laughs> you, yeah. do you, do you, I'm just going to take off the headphones and walk away on that one. All right, guys. Do you see what you I deal with? For, Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm sure we'll have Brody back again at some point. Uh, and maybe we'll tell some of those stories. And <laughs> Actually, you know what I want to hear while I'm just sitting here laughing Uh-oh. is I want you to tell Las Vegas stories on him. There's really not. No, he wussed out most of the time. I mean, he was when he was there with me. Which time? Most, well, most, almost every time. You've all, you always no, like. I mean, I've got to go back. I'm, I'm a little tired. You didn't stay up for 24 hours. Uh, no. no I mean, there's always the story and I've told on here about getting drunk twice in the same day when we yeah. were there in 01. Yeah, um, I drank myself sober. Yeah, I want to, I want to hear Vegas stories at some point. I will tell you some Vegas stories. Yeah. I will also tell you at some point about the 400 pound woman that. Slip me the tongue at Opryland because that's a fun story too. <laughs> got me got what it is so, low. <laughs> so guys, uh, yeah, go and check out in the uh, show notes um, our um, our social media is there. I'm sure Alan will put up a YouTube playlist at some point. Yeah, I'll put up a YouTube playlist for all this music um, as I usually do, and then uh, go to our Discord. Discord is so much fun. Uh, tell us about your songs that 
take you back to a summer type a summer place. Um, just come over and hang out with us on yeah, Discord. come on and just you know. And again, we have a, a tab in there for suggestions and stuff to do, which we will get to. I and promise. We are we are going to get to them uh, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll be back in some time at some point. We're not sure when. Do what not go follow, yeah, go follow. You can follow us on what not. What is well. the what is the uh, what's what not? What not you don't know what what not is? What are you what guys doing? Kinda cool. What not is a live auction site and we do shows on there in which you just auction off everything. Thirty second auctions, people sit there, place their bids, boom, done. Yeah, we it's amazing. Brody and I have hmm. I we've know, got two a, shows tonight. Over a decade ago was doing we have. I, don't know, I think I'm. I don't know if we ever talked about this on on here. We had a we had a store for one thing, but we used to do the the flea market, and we were doing a lot of like toys and pop culture items and stuff. like that. We were that. called recycled relics yeah. with an X. Oh, and I remember then, that. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, life happened, and we wound up not doing it any longer. And then um, uh, we just recently kind of started getting back into it again. And yep. so yeah, that's kind of a. Uh, um, I'll just have to find out when you guys are doing it and then come over and do the pre-show. We're doing it tonight. We're doing two of them tonight. That's why you brought that vinyl over here. Yeah. I know that was, that was the pre-show for me. <laughs> yeah, that was the pre-show. And that yeah, was the day when go. it was like, yeah, well, how much? So, so, so what like, did he buy again? Um, rad albums and... Uh, got, um, how many got, of them? I two? I got, two, I got, two rad albums. I got a... I got the Kiss Ace Freely, where they did the four yeah. individual albums because they were about to break up anyway. And I also got uh, ZZ Top. Yep. Afterburner. 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 I'll tell you what, uh, Sharp Dressed Man could have been on this list. Again, that was at yeah. 84, any, I guess it was. Any of those I thought 80s. it was Eliminator that you got. It might have been. Or Afterburner. Eliminator. Afterburner. Afterburner's Afterburner's is with one, rough it's boy. Eliminator. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. It, it was Eliminator. eliminator. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Afterburner had Sleeping Bag and yeah. um, Rough, rough Boys. Boys. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. What not? What is what is the... So, t- uh, so you can find us. I don't know what your tag on there I, is. I haven't even signed up for it yet. Oh, so. well, there you go. But mine is Delicious Guilt. Yeah. So, we, I do, I'm do. i going to do an auction tonight. We've got nine people that have already bookmarked it, so well, that's by pretty the time good. this goes up, it'll be... Oh, it'll, it'll be, be later. Be on, yeah. But we'll later, be but, doing more shows. So but I'll still put a, a link in the, the show notes for, for that. Um, you never know. And maybe start dropping some stuff in the discord when we're going to do one. So, Oh, that'd be because cool. I know like, um, Brody Quinn and Stu Baca and then we'll probably butter spider. will probably want to buy some especially vinyl and stuff. So it's, a, yeah, and I'm so. sure Miss So would probably want to get in there too. If she gets yeah, a chance. So find like some artwork and that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, it's like, yeah. We, we do a little bit of everything. So, uh, that's kind of where we are. <laughs> I guess we're going to start promoting and stuff on here. So. <laughs> You got we never to. really promoted like anything on here that, that of that that type before. So, uh, but yeah, we'll have links hey, great. To all so, that what, stuff. what percentage of the sales are you going to donate for this advertisement <laughs> at this point? I'll work through that with yeah, them. Well, I, I think since I'm on the show, that you did. So. <laughs> uh, for for my end, I just need to be able to go through the vinyl first. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. there you go. You get the pre show. May, yeah, maybe get a little discount there or something. Go, I don't so. know. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. Like I said, we will be back in couple weeks i guess or a week or or whenever year, we whenever we can yeah. and we are still working on some stuff behind the scenes to try to get some more stuff out there and it's just not coming together easily at all and um yeah so uh with that i am alan smith i'm the other guy big dave and we were joined by brody brown there you go and um uh, yeah we will see you guys next time have a good summer and listen to some cool music good enough make yeah. memories See you. When the summer girls come in, summer girls go. Summer worthwhile and summer so so. Summer girls come in, summer girls go. Summer worthwhile and summer so so. Summertime girls got it going on. Shake and wiggle to a hip hop song. Summertime girls are the kind of like. I steal your honey like I stole your bike. New kids on the block had a bunch of hits. Chinese food sings music. And I think it's fly when girls stop by for the summer. For the summertime. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and fish. I'd say good if I had one wish. But she's been gone since that summer. Since that summer.